diabetes, AIDS, cancer, Good evening once again, folks, and welcome to Doctor and Call. First, um, we must apologize for the late start. Um, you know, uh, we would have to blame it on COVID-19, yeah? We will have little technical difficulties. Um, other than that, um, Dr. Nixon would have been in studio here with me, live and in person. So um, COVID-19 is responsible. Dr. Nixon, good evening and welcome to Doctor and Call. Good evening, sir, and welcome. It looks like you're starting to forget things. I woke up here a minute. Um, things oh, just yeah. have a way of just falling in place. Yes. All right. So we welcome you again, folks, and we also welcome our viewers on GBN Television to our live Doctrine Call program. This evening, we're talking about dementia, and we are going to understand quite a few things. Now, dementia by itself is not a condition, but um, Dr. Nix will explain to us what it is, um, you know, the symptoms, the various stages, uh, stages, and how we deal with that. So, Dr. Um, dementia. What are we talking about here? We're talking about uh, a, a series of symptoms that people manifest as they get older, and it's been related to decrease in, in, in your brain function, basically. You know, and there are many reasons why your brain will not function normally. Everything as it gets older doesn't work as well. Your new bends is not going to work. Your new bends is going to be work, work better than your old ladder. You know that, right? So as you get older, and different things, we, we, we are affected by different diseases, trauma, but, uh, you know, whatever it is, toxins, whatever happens in the atmosphere, um, infectious diseases, etc., that cause damage to the brain that can help us um, develop dementia. And, and those symptoms that we see um, generally are related to your cognitive behavior, the things... That, that sense of awareness and self and being able to function and think and make decisions and how you control, um, basically, how you control the impulses and all of those things, right? Um, how you reason. And sometimes, you know, just even your balance, right? Um, your cognitive abilities are what are most, and your memory. Memory is the first thing that shows up. Right? With dementia. So those are the areas. It's really a neurological thing. It happens at the level of your brain. And um, it happens as we grow older. Right. What is old? Over 60. Because I, I was, I was going to ask you, um, if it is, uh, would you consider it to be normal that people start um, losing memory as they grow older, or um, the yeah. whole idea of dementia is a, a, a condition then? Boy, I want to ask you, how many times you leave the kitchen to go for something and I have to go back to the kitchen? Well, it depends on what I was going for. <laughs> no, no, it, it happens. It happens all the time. It happens. I, but we forget a little more, especially information that we're not managing every day. Yes. Information. But in the case of people with dementia, the things they normally do, like putting on their shirt, combing their hair, brushing their teeth, making us a cup of tea, you know, the ability for all of those things are lost. Their children, their grandchildren. But I've seen people ask, who are they? I saw a gentleman who had developed dementia quite early as a result of alcohol consumption, which is one of, which is one of the greatest challenges that we have in our community. He was in his 80s, because when I met him, he was in his 80s. Uh -huh. And his son had come to see, but he had lost his memory. He lost all his memory at 53. So anything he remembers was before that. Really? Right, so yes. He, at 53, he had lost his memory, and that's because of severe alcohol consumption. Uh -huh. um, his son comes to see him because he lives in an institution, right? And um, he says, who are you? <laughs> right? Who are you? And he says, I'm Tom, your son. And he says, you're my son? No. He says, yes, I am. He says, so he said, man says to him, how old are you? He says, I'm 46. He says, what's your problem, boy? 
How can I be a father? I'm 53 and you're 46. Right? That is how long he had lost his memory. So 30 something years, he doesn't remember his son. The child may have lived abroad, right? You know, in those early years. Uh -huh. He has no But the truth is with dementia, it's, it, it doesn't happen today for tomorrow unless you've had a big accident. Okay. We have severe trauma. And um, it happens slowly. You know, you start to forget things. And people know. You would see people who are having dementia and they start to realize, sometimes they realize, I'm forgetting. You've been here for a while, haven't you? Yes. Um, you just brought those apples on the table. Oh, is you made this cup of tea? Where does the tea come from? Oh, oh, is you make it? And you see them trying to make up, or they tell what looks like untruths uh -huh. when they realize that they they are forgetting. Right. So that's early, early stage. Things start happening. All right. Um. And and it will get worse. And we have different kinds of dementia. So you know you have the Alzheimer's is probably the most common. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And I want, I want us to think of dementia in a bit So dementia is a big thing. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big disease, okay? And Alzheimer's is one form of dementia. We have what Alzheimer's, and we think Alzheimer's is dementia and other things are upset. Alzheimer's is just one. It's just the majority of people have Alzheimer's. And it's an Alzheimer's principal um, symptom. Most The first symptom is a loss of memory. Uh -huh. Right? Um, what else was I saying? So we have we have people with dementia, but you can have dementia started early, relatively early. I had a friend who had um, cancer and was given some medications, and she had brain injury as a result. I had a patient who had, had brain injury and an accident. Frontal lobe, which is very front, front, front or temporal lobe, front and side, you know, the temporal area, who lost, um, who developed dementia, uh -huh. you know? And you see it, you see it in some younger people who have had trauma or, you know, a couple of years, not a couple, recently we had this big anti-vax movement, right? We're not vaccinating our children. Well, we talked about that before, about not vaccinating our children and the consequences. Right. A lot of those diseases, like meningitis, like measles, like mumps, actually do have brain complications. So they're thinking that some infectious diseases down the road can actually make you have dementia because they have, it causes damage to the brain, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you can, you can also have children, young children who have had trauma, who have had severe infections and, and, and that. So it goes across the spectrum, except that the majority of dementia, because for for for, for for all intents and purposes, it's a progressive disease. It's uh -huh. slow, right? The most of what most of what you will see is this progressive disease that comes on, and you recognize their changes. It is very important that you recognize those changes, right? Um, and we'll talk about the changes in a while, but it's very important that you recognize them. What's going to make you get dementia? Right. What's going to? <laughs> um, we kind of don't know. But we, we've seen some behaviors. First of all, um, genetics. Genetics play a very, and especially in the case of Alzheimer's. Uh -huh. Right? Um, especially in the case of Alzheimer's, genetics play a very, very, very important role in, in, in somebody manifesting dementia. Right? And remember that with dementia, the person's cognitive functions are so badly affected that they need support to do their basic, basic daily activities, mm -hmm. right? And and of course, they need supervision, so they don't forget the food on the fire, or they light the stove and walk away, right? Forgetting that they came from a kettle, and by the end of the day, there's no, ga there's no gas in the tank, or they just, right? Or whatever it is, you know? We know of people going on the street and walking away, right? And they just don't remember. So, um... There is, it, it happens slowly, progressively, right? So we, we are talking about what causes it. We don't know, really. We, mm -hmm. We're looking, because there's a lot of research going on in relation to dementia. Um, some populations have it more than others. So the Japanese are probably the people with the lowest rate of dementia in the world, and they have a very old population. Uh -huh. So they're a good to look to research, right? They, they have a lot of old people in Japan, but maybe their lifestyle eat a lot of fatty fish. They eat mostly vegetarian. 
especially the cruciferous ones, the ones that crunch. Yes, uh huh. Celery and lettuce and cabbage and those ones, right? Pretty pretty bit vegetables there, carrots and sweet peppers, all the colors of the peppers and the lettuce, the bright lettuce and the and the balanjin and all of those things that have really nice colors. Those those are. you eat a lot of nuts. Exercise, not smoking, not drinking, right? Staying healthy, right? Um, those are things that we know. If we do those things, it is people who don't practice that kind of lifestyle are likely to develop dementia. The other group of people who are, and this applies to our population especially, and in, in a time when uh, the world population, aging population is growing. Yes. So we're gonna have all of these seniors who, if we don't, if we're not careful, will have Alzheimer's. Guess what? What is our biggest health problem in Grenada? Chronic diseases, yes. right? So hypertension, diabetes, all of these things. It is obesity, um, cholesterol, all of those things directly. Because remember, you have to have proper circulation for the brain to stay alive, right? And people don't drink a lot of water. You know, you don't if you don't keep that balanced way of living. All of those diseases do affect your 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 blood vessels. So people with heart disease already have problems elsewhere. It's not just the heart vessels that are clogged up with cholesterol, right? Um, people with um, hypertension, right? Diabetics who have constantly have just as how the circulation is compromised in their foot, you get blocked. In the brain, it happens. Little bits of the brain die and die and die and die. There's no oxygen. Function goes away. Right. So it is very important that we focus on that. Those of us who uh, still have some time and some brain and some memory need to make sure that we are taking good, uh, having all, all these diseases under very good control. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's a, that's an in a nutshell. This is six books. <laughs> right. Yes, indeed. So um, can can dementia be reversed? Um, in the case of Alzheimer's, if you, if you, because we mentioned one of the early symptoms is that you realize um, you start forgetting. You, you don't remember that you came with a cup of tea and you have it on the table in front of you, um, and you, you see these little things happening. You went into St. George's, you packed your vehicle on the carnage, and you went into um, one of the shops, and when you come out, you don't remember where you pack your vehicle. And it's because somebody teaches your car. You are, you are convinced that they teach your car. You know? Right. For the same reason why people as Alzheimer's don't want people in their houses. They forget everything. They don't remember where they put their money because they hide it because already they don't have trust. They have paranoid, right? They hide their money and then they say, the girl that's the one you bring last week, to say to me, I don't want you to come back here because she's teething. She teeth my sheet, she teeth my pillowcase, she teeth money. And on top of it, she don't give enough food. And the, and the pillowcase is there, on the bed. Yeah, and she ate the food. Is she a place in the sink? I went to visit a lady recently who has severe dementia. The most pleasant person. Uh -huh. Okay? And I got there, and she was eating. And I asked her last year, I made she don't eat all day. She did, and the plate on the table still. They haven't, she said she's sitting here hungry. None of them think about giving her something to eat. And I met her eating. So that's a level of forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. You know, loss of memory that comes with the damage. Reversal, I don't know. You probably can't detain. Because one of the things that is found in, in dementia um, where, is that there are these deposits, these protein deposits, that kind of block the, the transmission of information. So, you know, the brain is a, has the cells and they have all these spikes that join one one vessel, one, one nerve cell to the other, to the other, to the other. Mm -hmm. And those, those, those dendrites, those things that, the extension of the brain cell that attach it to the other one. Yeah, uh -huh. the amyloid and proteinaceous, protein substances kind of envelop them and act like, act like to stop the, 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 the transmission. And so things don't happen in sequence as they should. That would normally happen for memory and you know and, and just your cognition, just your recognizing people, make, doing functions, making good decisions, not being uh, impulsive, right? Um, and understanding exactly being in control of your life, not going to go to the bathroom, 
no, no, you want to go to the bathroom that you really should get up now and walk to the toilet, right? I mean, you get up, you, you know, you pull up the toilet seat and sit on it. All those little things, right? That that would not, you normally do almost spontaneously without thinking. When you, because your thinking is, 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 is affected so badly, when you need to go, you might remember you can go to the toilet, but you should just sit on the seat. Or, you know, it's might lead you to the toilet, but just sit on the seat. Mm-hmm. Not recognize that she needs to pull up the cover. Do you understand? So those those are the challenges that 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 people have. Right. Um. Are, are there are there different? Well, no. Well, in, in a nutshell, we spoke of the stages, but are there different types of dementia? Um, yes, there. Mm-hmm. Dementia. Um. And 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 um. So the, the most common one is um Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. Yes. All right. Sure. We spoke of that. You have. Vascular dementia, uh-huh. and we talk about where you have, you know, circulatory challenges, and not just hypertension and diabetes, but in our environment, it's one. Then you have dementia that comes secondary to, um, to like infections, and the dementia that have to do with just the structure of the of the brain. Um, you'd be surprised because there are three things that put us at greatest risk. Um, well, the age and family history, but having Down syndrome is actually a risk factor for developing um, dementia early. Really? Right? Okay. So, so there, there, there are other things around mm-hmm. that might put you at greater risk. Okay. But, of course, your age is one. Right. Um, uh, mixed dementia. Um, you mean I, having I, a... I came across... Yeah, I came across... Yeah, some, um, so because... Because I can develop Alzheimer's, but have been a hypertensive, or have had a stroke, or have had um, things like Parkinson's, right? Uh-huh. Other diseases that causes challenges. Um, so that's makes dementia, but I can also have Alzheimer's in all of it. Because different kinds of dementia can have different, like I said, Alzheimer's feature is principally um, the memory loss. And if you lose your memory, you're going to forget how to do a lot of things anyway, mm-hmm. okay? And and there's irritability and um, anxiety and depression and other things that come with it, but principally is, is memory loss. Um, the there's Lewy body, and and that's another form another form of dementia where they have deposits on the brain. So um, we we probably have, but not as many people. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's Dagatelian. And, and it's kind of related to also to the alcohol-induced um, dementia. There's, well, the structural one, the Alzheimer's, which is a common one, which is mostly kind of vascular, but, um, and, and you have the position of amyloid. But the next one is, you can recognize, you should recognize if a person has something else. Right, mm-hmm. that is showing that condition. Besides just having Alzheimer's, right. The other thing is that um, age is one of the greatest risk factors. Mm-hmm. The older you get, mm-hmm. the greater the, the challenges. Right. So, probably seven point something percent of our older population actually will develop. Well, that's in North America when we research. Okay, mm-hmm. we we still don't have research. Enough. We don't have research facilities. We don't. We certainly don't have enough research. We have a small population, and we should be. There's actually a, there's actually a, a, a thrust from within the World Health Organization to really put dementia on the on the on the platform uh-huh. because we treat people with dementia. We we in other words, if you brought your grandmother to my office, right? I would say to you, hey, you know your grandmother have dementia, right? But you don't, that's not what you bring her. You bring her because you want to check her pressure and she's mm-hmm. been diabetic, or you just want to get a checkup because she complains so much pain, whatever it is, right? Or she just have these have problems. But I'm saying, but we know and we just accepted it. There are things we should be doing for people with dementia. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, we just don't say, okay, he had dementia. Or, you know, we should say old people suck, right? right? Yes. Um, <laughs> but there are things you should be supposed to be doing. We as caregivers, those of us who are caregivers, must be carefully chosen so that they understand exactly what are the patterns here, what what is the person experiencing, and how can I support them. They'll tell you the same thing over and over. 
I have a relative that I visited, right? And I haven't seen her for several years. And I discovered, it's really my cousin's mother. And I discovered that she had had, a, she's a really nice person, you go to the house, right? But then she told me the same story a couple of times, didn't pay any mind. But I would call her. I lived in one place, she's in another, and I'd call her like probably once a month or every three weeks, let's see, right? Hey, just checking in on a Sunday night, five minutes. And she started to tell the same story six times in our short conversation. Yeah. But she was somebody who was a, she lived in a senior's environment, but she would support a lot of other seniors. But I watched her cognitive cha- cha- challenges and I would ask her questions again and again, and she would answer me like I had to ask her, right? Because I realized she wasn't remembering that we just discussed okay. that. Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And she she does have severe, she does have severe dementia, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But as far as now, someone what? someone who has dementia, um, w- w- would that person be aware that they they have the condition? Because if you if you're forgetting and you're in a situation where look, you don't remember, um something actually appears new to you because your thinking is so badly affected that you, it doesn't matter it does okay you don't nothing doesn't matter you're just not thinking you can't think anymore you can't make decisions you, can, you, lose, you, you lose your sense of reasoning you lose your sense of impulse control and all of those things so you just exist and you you I guess maybe some instinct and mm-hmm. not, not even that because you, they will sit in the sun for the whole day. If you, you understand, unless you take them out, they don't realize, oh, this is too hot to go inside. So all of those pathways of decision-making, etc., are lost. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Are, there, are, have, yeah, are there other disorders that are linked to dementia? You mean besides... Um, like um, besides, you know, diabetes, traumatic potential. brain injury, um, Huntington diseases brain. and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Infections, a lot of brain infections, meningitis, they have some other exotic ones. And like I said, the structure, if you have damage to the structure of your brain, you, and not just front, not just the front of temporal ones, because that's where you're going to get all the, um, all the impulse and, 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 the, and the language, because the language is very effective. So you know this person was really a nice lady, and she had a, or a guy, a young guy, who's had a traumatic brain injury, especially from the temporal who becomes extremely profane, mm-hmm. right? The language changes or it might become um, absent as happens with a lot of people with dementia. They have no language. They don't communicate at all. They don't understand. They just stand there. Nothing nothing moves because you have so many blocks in the brain. Mm-hmm. Um, so they may hear you, but they're unable to process yes, what you and think. respond, right? So those are some of the challenges that people have. Okay, so let's take a commercial break, Doc. When we come back, um, I, I want to speak a bit more about um, some of the conditions because there are probably some conditions that, you know, could be addressed. So we talk about that when we come back after the break. So with us, folks, we'll be right back and we'll also be taking some of your calls. Don't go anywhere. Broadcasting from the top of Observatory. Pharmacy offers both wholesale and retail pharmaceutical and over-the-counter products. We have the most competitive and affordable prices. We are the agents for Vit Plus multivitamin for healthy everyday lifestyle and sanatogen powder. Hills and Valley Pharmacy supplies the best quality, name brand clinical products such as Rescue Oil, Bio Oil, Neutrogena, Aveno and Clarisol. We offer the most convenient opening hours. Our telephone numbers are 435-6904 or 6903. Remember, at Hills and Valley Pharmacy, your health is our business. We care. Now open Hills and Valley Medicare Center, your one stop for medical supplies, massage therapy, physiotherapy, and an in house physician. At Hills and Valley, your health is our business. The Grenada Airport 
Transit's authority is taking all the necessary health and safety measures to protect staff and passengers from COVID-19 at both the Maurice Bishop International Airport and the Lauriston Airport. The airport authority assures the general public that it continues to follow guidelines outlined by the Ministry of Health, CARFA, and WHO, and has employed international best practice measures, such as sensitization sessions for staff, enhanced passenger screening, improved sanitation protocols, and monitoring updates from official local, regional, and international agencies. The safety of all our employees and passengers is our top priority. Thus, we have improved signage and taken additional steps to remind all our employees, passengers, and other stakeholders of the six feet physical distancing protocols, wearing of masks, and other sanitation measures. We have also installed additional sanitizing stations throughout the facility, floor markers, plexiglass sneeze guards for customer contact points, as well as COVID-19 testing stations. Upon entry to the terminal, all passengers are screened by public health officials and required to fill out health declaration forms. The authority is and continues to be committed to taking all the necessary protective measures to reduce the risk of the spread of COVID-19 and to ensure the safety and wellness of all involved. Esplanade Mall, something for everyone. Go on a shopping spree today and experience some magic. At Communo, we are adapting to meet the changing needs of our shareholders and members. Times are changing, and with the changing times comes a whole new way to do business. Our parents may have done their banking a different way. Communal's state-of-the-art online banking and international debit card allows members to do business with great ease. It's like literally having a branch in your very own hands. Need a loan? Apply online from the comfort of your own home anywhere in the world and your request will be dealt with remotely. Want to transfer between your accounts or another shareholder? No wait time for transactions to update. Voila! Who needs receipts when you can receive them via e-statements on your mobile device and save the environment? Not a communal member? You can join our family today by applying online. At Communa, we see you working hard to ensure that you save, invest, and grow. Communal, join us today. This will be the best financial decision you have ever made. My name is Hollis, Mr. Kilamak, and I endorse this message. You're already ill and have no time or energy to walk every which way to access your healthcare needs. So come to Spice Isle Imaging on the Carinage for a one-spot stop for all your health service needs. See our in-house doctor and get your meds from the pharmacy right on location. Digital x-ray, MRI, CT scans, mammography, ultrasound and laboratory services are also available. So for that moment when life makes demands on you, you can make demands on us. Visit us at Spice Isle Imaging, Carinage, St. George's. It's new, innovative and classy, and it cut above the rest. Your one-stop shop for bathtubs, kitchener, customized doors and windows, and even a new paint shop. We also sell quartz and solid surface countertops. At Eminent Hardware, we offer best prices, excellent service, efficiency, and reliability. Visit us at Dusty Highway, Grand Dance St. George, or call telephone number 440-6757. M&N Hardware, from foundation to roof, let's build together.
welcome back, folks. It's uh, Doctor and Call, uh, and this evening uh, we are discussing dementia. Um, those of you uh, just joining us, um, Doc, there are, there are some causes of dementia or, or dementia-like symptoms um, uh, that can be reversed with treatment. Um, what are some of those? Um, in other words, some of the things that can bring it on. What are some of those and, and how can we treat them? And if these conditions are treated, can, can you have an improvement in one's cognition? I guess, it, I guess it, the, the level of cognitive um, recuperation you have depends on the extent of where the, person, the person's dementia. Uh -huh. Okay, because they may be so far gone that you really can't take them back. So, vitamin deficiency for one. Okay, nutritional. Um, getting especially the vitamin B six, B twelve, um, vitamin D are very important. Those those deficiency diseases. And those are things you get vitamin D from the sun. You get B six and B twelve from fresh vegetables and stuff, right? And and fruit. So, but you might need larger doses if you if you that deficient that your brain is bothered. Um, and we, we talk about infections, and we have to ensure that we take care of infections properly so that you don't have brain damage, right? We have to be, we have to be surgery, for example. Sometimes just having a surgical intervention can cause you. I told you about chemotherapy in the case of patients who have cancer. Or just having a brain tumor might be a cause for you, and you may not be able to reserve that. But maybe, you, might be, you may not be able to prevent it, but maybe you can actually preserve some function, a lot of cognitive function, if you are careful, if the surgeon is careful, how he performs the surgery. Persons with HIV and AIDS, right? HIV, there are medications, right? So people who syphilis, with syphilis, for example, does bring on a, you can have secondary, you can have tertiary syphilis that affects the brain and people can have the prevention, okay? Um, uh, there, there's a whole lot of stuff like, like alcohol for example we need to really control it from early but sometimes alcohol dementia is very difficult I, I met another lady when I, I was working in mental health for a while I was, I was work, actually working in substance news for a while and um, I met this lady who was taken to the hospital who they thought was having um, a stroke she wasn't, she was just Dementing, but she had had a severe alcohol problem. I mean, it was it was painful to look at because I hadn't seen a, a woman. But she would just drink. That day, we drink a case of beer and a day with rum. Right? She had had totally obliterated brain functions. Right? Function. I mean, you should see the home they lived in. It was painful to look at because she had had so much. Cognitive disability. Yeah, she can pick up and go to town. She didn't do that very often unless her husband took her. But she just stayed home and she had and she go across the road to the shop to get to get the alcohol. So that was available to her. So alcohol. And maybe we can recuperate some function with high levels of vitamin and stuff, but maybe already. Like I said, it depends on exactly where you are. <laughs> what about poisoning? Um Yes. Some toxins, some poisons. Um and I guess it, again, it depends on what how much penetration into the into the brain tissue there is, because the brain tissue is very fatty. If you have a poison that loves fat, it's going to get in there and stick. If it, right, if it's a, if it's a what we call a lipophilic toxin, toxic poison, it's going to get in there and stick in that tissue very easy, and it might be difficult. There are ways that they try, like using chelation and those kind of stuff, right? Um, um, they claim some heavy metals. Right, mm -hmm. mercury and stuff um, also causes dementia. People who have um, who have cancers or who have some cancer, a lot of cancers, especially in the terminal stage, causes high levels of magnesium, and that can bring on symptoms of dementia. So if you can correct that, you can you know you can mm -hmm. get a person's brain functioning to go back to normal. Right. Um, a, a big one and a popular one. Um, side effects from medication. Yeah. Um, some people do. Um, and some diseases like like vas other vascular diseases. I've seen a woman who had men dementia symptoms. Yeah, relatively young woman. Should have been in her probably early fifties. 
Oh, yeah, fifties so definitely. Who came in and was having? She looks like she was mentally ill, but she realized she's not mentally ill until she realized that all her digits were blue. Right. Mm -hmm. So those are those are the things. You know, sometimes we see people with symptoms and we don't look for diseases. So before I say you have dementia, I have to make sure that all the other things that you you you, you may have that may cause those symptoms are looked for. Okay. Are sort of. Yeah. Right. Um, another one, anoxia. Like um, when the organs and tissues are not getting enough oxygen, um, oh, people yeah, right. with asthma so, and stuff like yes, that. Yes, um, severe respiratory problems. Um, a young man had a, a severe bout of pneumonia. Young man, very young, thirties, right? Had a severe bout of pneumonia and it was so bad that he had compromise um, to his brain. The oxygen was so low in the system that he had brain death. And he has severe dementia, and he has a bad kind of, he had frontal lobe. Oh. So this is a guy who became very sexually inappropriate, so he'd go, even his girlfriend tried to give him, he'd go at her. He, he ended up having to have a male caregiver because he was very sexually inappropriate. What he'd say, how he'd behave, was painful to the guy. So anoxia. So that's what I'm saying to you. You can have children who suffer problems with anoxia, you know, low oxygen perfusion, low oxygen getting into their brain and have damage. Mm -hmm. And can have symptoms of dementia. Mm -hmm. And like other people who have had strokes or who might um, near drowning, all of those things where you have low, you can have that, because remember, what happens, your brain doesn't function. It doesn't mean someone who walks around all the time. You can have people who are bedridden because they, they had a paralysis and they have dementia associated because now they don't have any cognitive skills and all the rest of it, and they can't really care for themselves. Mm -hmm. So that is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about um, metabolic problems, your, your hormones, endocrine system? Oh, right. And we spoke about, we spoke, some people with, um, other diseases like lupus and stuff, because they, they might affect, and even taking like steroids sometimes mm -hmm. can cause you to have some brain damage and you may have those symptoms. But those aren't the more common ones. Mm -hmm. Diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, um, those are the challenges that we have to fix because those ones are going to directly affect Please. your blood vessels, especially the small vessels in your brain and make your brain function. Um, deteriorate. Okay, right. So um, there's there's uh, um, one of the, the things that happen to some people. Um, they tend to hallucinate. Um, sometimes they they might be sitting and then they tell you, look at uh, 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 they see oh, they're seeing some they're seeing things they seen someone walking in front of them. There's nobody yes. there. Um, yes. Is that is that also one of the symptoms of dementia? Yes, I think it comes in the Louis body type of 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 of, the, of 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 dementia, not so much in Alzheimer's as in other types. So if they, if they have an hallucinations, you have to look for what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yes. Yeah. So, but hallucinations is a, a a component, and I guess that's really people who are already very very ill who have severe dementia will have hallucinations. Yes. So this. We want people to look for because we have to look to see because we don't consider it primarily and i said to you like i said you know your mother having alzheimer's you know your mother having dementia mm -hmm. oh, i might come and say guess what you know my mother's been very isolated one is she's depressed right um she don't want to do anything she wants to take care of herself you know the self-care goes down because they can't do the thing that is normal routine that comes naturally lost, yeah uh-huh mm -hmm. they had lost the capacity and um they don't want to bathe that's one of the principal challenges they don't want to bathe because they probably realize they don't know how to get in and out of the bathroom and it's irritating going in and the cold water falling on you or you know but self-care especially in people who live alone and that's what we have to look out for the older people who, you know, you have a man who's 65 who will be living by himself forever, his spouse might have died, or a woman in the same age whose spouse might have died, or children are gone away and you're living alone. Anyway, you know, 
the kids send you money you, or you have a pension and you need to live. But then you start wearing the same dress for three days. And you never don't see you come out and hang clothes and sing on hang clothes on the line and sing. You know? It, it must cause a concern. Right. And then probably I don't see this is oh Miss Mary, where have you been? Oh, I just I was inside, okay. Because you realize that something is missing. You know, you know. Mm-hmm. But next week you miss two days. You know? Those are the things we have to look out for. That right. that that insidious it almost like creeps on you. I wanna talk about I wanna talk about what happens, the symptoms. The things we have to look out for. I'm going to go through. We have 10 basic symptoms. Uh-huh. And you can ask. So the first one is memory loss. Very intimately related to Alzheimer's, as I said. And the majority of people will have, 60% of the people will have Alzheimer's who have dementia, right? Um, and like I said, and it's funny, it's the first world countries, Belgium, Sweden, um, the USA. Uh, uh, Finland has the highest rate of Alzheimer's in the world of dementia in general, right? And the USA, Canada, UK. But maybe it is because those populations are the ones who have research. Yeah. But the other thing is that maybe it's because people in other places live differently. Because if you remain active, right? And you read and you play games and you go and play the grandchildren and you tell stories and you keep your brain going and probably just not sit and watch TV, right? You may not develop dementia. Or even if it is, it's maybe not as severe to to require, um, you know, full scale intervention that you need full time care and supervision. All right. So memory loss is probably the principal um, symptom. Is and it's what's significant is hard for you to recall the things that you normally do. Right. Like, like I said, making yourself a cup of tea. Right. Um, get up in the morning and how do I comb my hair? Comb my hair back in one for fifty years. And one day you just don't remember how to comb your hair. You got me? So those things you don't put on your shirt, right? Drain yourself in the towel. So you might, the person might go to the bathroom and just stand there because the brain can't tell them what to do. Right. You lose the things that you know. Your grandchildren who come over all the time. Who are you? Or if you're closer to your grandchildren, you know you, you, you forget your children. Right? Things that should come normal. What what happens, you now become reliant on other people to keep track of the things that should be your normal routine thing. So mm-hmm. they might, you know, your children might leave a calendar in a room. I remember going into a hospital room and see, um, saying, on a, they have a little board where they write for the patients. Um, today is Tuesday, June 30, 2020. My name is Sonia Nixon. Mm-hmm. So you see it, and you keep remembering. So every day they change the date, right? Or oh, and, and I say I'm at the General Saint George's General Hospital. So you see it, you can read, you can you, you get things. But that's for people who still have some cognitive ability. Okay, right. uh-huh. I recognize. The other thing, um, other problems is that difficulty in planning and solving problems. So your custom says, you know, I'm gonna go to town. I need to go down by not my GCNA and get my not my bonus money, right? And then I'm gonna go up to the petty bank and put it in there. And I just have a little change in my pocket. I'm gonna go down to I wanna go to food land, get some food, and I'll take I'll 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 I'll, I'll take the bus back. And this is it. Right? Or something similar as I'm just going to the bank. I'm going to my lawyer to make sure that my will is in place. Whatever it is, something very simple. You, you don't know how to do that anymore. Things that you used to do easy, you can't do it anymore. Or just get up in the morning and says, okay, let me let me sweep the house and change the bed linen. You, 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 you can't plan for those things anymore. And even if somebody tries to remind you, just doing those activities, especially sequential activities, doesn't come easy anymore, right? But even with um, sight, Doc, um, just, to, just to cutting, even with sight, so, so for example, the issue of not remembering to make your bed in the morning when you get up. But you get up, I mean, the bedroom, you notice that your your, your bed sheet is all over the place, your your pillow is probably rumpled, your um, sight, you know, the sight... W- uh, cognitive de- decrease, uh, especially if it's very ill. You have to get up and just haul the sheets, yes. But you know, the way it's making the bed nice and neat doesn't happen anymore. You, from, you don't know how to, to use directions. So let's say you're custom cooking a plum cake 
and your recipe that you use every day. And if you forget to take it out, you take out the recipe book. Even the recipe book in front of you, you can't. You won't run. You're not able to follow, right? Um, driving. My friend is married to an older guy. He's a big one. I mean, for me, she's a big one. But she, we're very close friends. And she's married to an older guy who drives. He's lived in the U.S. forever. He's in his late 80s. But he's developed dementia in the last year. And a couple of weeks ago, they go in the, they live in, they live in Ultra Midwest, but you know, small town, thank God. Because they go in, they get to the light, the red light, he stops. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of the red light, he puts his foot on the gas and drives off. Luckily, there was no traffic coming on the opposite it was small town, right? And it was there probably in the middle of the morning when there aren't a lot of people on the street. But you know, something as simple as that. Because you get to the red light, and you know you must not move on to there's a green light. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? But no. That kind of ability to make, um, to solve it. What is this? What's going on here? Why is there a red light? Oh, I can't go. That's what it means. No. He just put his foot on the gas because he knows he should be driving. And nobody said, she didn't say anything. They were just sitting there. He just slammed out. So those are the challenges here. Then you know, you know you're taking from behind the wheel immediately, right? Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, something simple as... Getting your bills, right? To figure out how much money you have in a bank. I spent two hundred dollars on food, fifty dollars for the light bill, twenty dollars for water, and um, a telephone bill, hundred and you know, with a cable, right? How much I spent this month? Okay, so I should have fifty dollars for my susu. You, you understand me? They can't do those things. They can't simple, do those things anymore. Mm -hmm. So that is the loss of the, the ability to plan and solve problems. Difficulty in doing familiar tasks. We talk about it, you know, dressing and bathing, combing your hair, brushing your teeth. Right? Washing your cup when you finish drinking a cup of tea and turn it down. Right? Changing the TV. Using the mo using the TV's what do you call the it? Remote the, control. Mm -hmm. Those simple things, right? Um, those those skills are lost. Um I'm trying to read this here, okay? Second it. Um You're confused about time and place. Where are you? I don't know. What's it? You know, Right? So you take them out of the, they might be able to say, I'm in the living room, but they may not know. Right? Mm -hmm. What day is today? They don't know. They tell you something way out. Or they might be able to say, Why are you asking me that? You know what today is already? When yeah, they realize yeah. they're They don't remember. Up. Yeah, uh huh. Right? And they have a difficulty judging how much time has gone. So, how much time have I been talking? I can say, We've probably been here for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, we just got here. Did we just get here? No? You know, I've been here all day. We want to lay the food. From morning, she ain't getting no food. And she was eating five minutes ago when I walked in five minutes ago. Right. Right? So who's that ability? Um, and then worse ever, they have to think of future dates. Next week, Monday. Next week, Tuesday. Those things. Difficulty in understanding visual information. So, remember to tell the gentleman, although he saw the red light, it, is, it didn't mean anything to him. Right. Um, you see a sign that says, go left. It doesn't, so they, so they seem to have their own way simply because those things do not, the information do not affect mm -hmm. their brains, mm -hmm. right? So, simple things like reading a map or um, judgment of color, red, green, blue, mm -hmm. those things, right? The, the red, yellow, green, what it means, those things they don't have, they don't keep that, right? Um, problem with communication, speaking. Um, you talk about hallucinations, they'll tell you what they see, mm -hmm. right? It comes on there. Um, the, hand, uh, the handwriting becomes less legible, the grammar goes, the, um, and they realize they stop, right? Because they realize they can't hold a pen. And it, it has nothing to do with Parkinson's or anything mm -hmm. tremors. They just cannot fold their, their brains, doesn't, their brain, that, 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 that thing that comes in the brain and makes a hand move in the direction, it doesn't happen. Um, they might forget what you're saying. I saw, have you ever seen somebody in the dimension who stops in the middle of their sentence? And they don't even realize, they, the, the cognitive challenges are so great that they don't even realize that they've actually, they were, it's not like they said, oh, can I say that again? No. They stop talk and their brain engages in something yes. else. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. But they also can't follow the conversation around them. Okay, because their brain doesn't uh, allow it to. And like you said, the spelling, the punctuation, everything changes, right? And it once it once that as far as the reading and the writing skills. 
um, misplacing things and which creates a lot of frustration. So then your grandmother says, you're tea for money. Right? And that she wash her dress and put it in the cupboard and she can't find it because somebody come in the house and stole, stole, it. stole it. But is that she folded it and she put it in the drawer? Right? She don't remember. Uh, or she put it in a suitcase. But she, it's not, that's not where it, it should go. So, you know, the, the thing about the phone missing and the key missing and all of that, right? And she sure is that girl that she said to wash the clothes and take it all away. So that's very hard for them. And it, it creates mistrust. And, 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 and sometimes if you don't understand, that can actually make, you know, make problems in family, in family relations. So if you go to your mother's house and she tell you how your sister take all her money and all the rest of it, you might have a problem with your sister. Why are you taking mommy's money, uh-huh. right? When you should have mommy money tie up and hide on the mattress. I'm serious, mm-hmm. right? So those are the challenges. Um, losing their keys and they're just, it's, it's very difficult for them. The other sign we have to look out for is a poor judgment in this and in decision making. So they become very impulsive. Those are people who, who get scammed. A guy called and said, I'm going if you if you send me five hundred thousand dollars, I would you know, I give you they, they, they can't judge and say, uh uh-uh. uh. No, that doesn't sound right. Mm-hmm. Right? So they make bad decisions, they go and they, they write over the will and they give they, they change it differently. That's why you have to make sure that somebody's a strong mind when they do these major yes, things. Yes, yes, indeed. Get mm-hmm. poor judgment. And they'll tell you, they give you $100 for the boss and say, this is right, keep the change. Right? So those are the things we have to look at. So they spell irrationally and um, they, they, they trust anybody, especially the people who are not good. Poor self-care, we spoke about that. And they become socially withdrawn. So you may see we spoke about that early today. They become social drawn. The person who doesn't want to go to church and sing and clap. She doesn't want to go to church anymore. She wants to stay in a room. She don't even watch TV. She just sit down on the bed and she fixes the sheet all day or she tearing up paper. That's one of the signs. They tend to, people who develop a dementia start tearing up paper into small, small bits. Mm-hmm. They tear and they tear and they tear. They tear half and they tear. Right? So they become isolated from their friends and their family. And you see this in movies with people who have Alzheimer's, especially Alzheimer's. They become very um, isolated, they don't talk, right? Um, you remember The Notebook, the movie? Did you see that movie? Um, no, I don't think. But this guy found his wife, and she had, she had dementia, was living in a, in, a, in a home, and he started to go through them. One day she remembered. One day her memory came back and then went back again. Very, because he was going through a notebook and reading it to her, right? Um... We talk about the conversation. And finally, one of the other things you have to look for is a change in mood. Because some of them get very depressed or they get mm-hmm. very irritable. And change in, in the personality. Like I said, it causes bad word. You know, um, things, behaviors that you've never seen get very antisocial um, or they get very um, flirtatious. Mm-hmm. Women want to dress differently, want to approach younger men and all those things, right? So you have to look out for all those signs as they get older. Those are the things that we want to make sure we have to do in order to protect them. Right. Is there a connection between um, dementia and depression? Um, people who, who have dementia, can they can they develop depression and, and, and anxiety? And Yes, they can. So those are some of the symptoms. They, they become depressed. Because I think sometimes people understand that I'm not functioning as I used to. Um, and because they don't remember, they think their children have forsaken them. You were there yesterday, but as far as they're concerned, you're not being to the house for six months. Mm-hmm. You probably even live in the house and they don't realize. So they feel isolated. But depression is one of the symptoms that people may have. So you have to, sometimes you don't recognize it because you can't treat depression, right? You are able to treat depression. So that that is one of the things that we have. But like I said, irritability, anxiety, um, on uh, irrational fears. So somebody who would normally go outside for a walk, not go outside because there are snakes and there are mongoose and all those people. Do you understand? So all those irrational fears, and probably there's not any snake among us in the yard. They've never been in that community, but they had they developed those kind of symptoms. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Okay, so we have to take our final break. And when yes. we come back, we'll open the telephone line. So it is, folks, our final break, and we'll be right back. Hills and Valley. 
Family Pharmacy offers both wholesale and retail pharmaceutical and over-the-counter products. We have the most competitive and affordable prices. We are the agents for Vit Plus Multivitamin for healthy everyday lifestyle and Sanatogen powder. Hills and Valley Pharmacy supplies the best quality, name brand clinical products such as Rescue Oil, Bio Oil, Neutrogena, Aveno and Clarosin. We offer the most convenient opening hours. Our telephone numbers are 435-6904 or 6903. Remember, at Hills and Valley Pharmacy, your health is our business. We care. Now open Hills and Valley Medicare Center, your one stop for medical supplies, massage therapy, physiotherapy, and an in house physician. At Hills and Valley, your health is our business. How going on, boy? Hey, hey, good, old things. Hey, Daisy. Yeah. Boy, in line, boy. Your house looking a real good day. Boy, it's thanks to the hardworking and professional staff at the Housing Authority of Grenada. They handled me real nice. They did my plan, they did the construction, and I didn't even have to worry about a thing. They were there with me every step of the way, supervising the job, asking me about my concerns, giving me feedback as the house took shape. They were there from start to finish, and even put the keys in the palm of my hand. I give them an A for customer service. Oh, it's people from housing bad boy. Boy, not bad. Excellent. If you're thinking about constructing your home, why not consult the Housing Authority of Grenada? You could visit them right down in the Sandino complex or give them a call 440-1015 or 440-1016. Or check out their website, hag473.com. They go handle you. They go jog your blocks. They go draw your plan. They go talk your materials. <laughs> hey, man, wait, wait. The Housing Authority of Grenada is your choice for affordable housing and a stress-free construction experience. You're already ill and have no time or energy to walk every which way to access your healthcare needs. So come to Spice Isle Imaging on the Carinage for a one-spot stop for all your health service needs. See our in-house doctor and get your meds from the pharmacy right on location. Digital x-ray, MRI, CT scans, mammography, ultrasound and laboratory services are also available. So for that moment when life makes demands on you, you can make demands on us. Visit us at Spice Isle Imaging, Carinage, St. George's. Welcome back, folks. Um, and uh, our telephone number four three five two zero four. And the line is going already. Let's see who is with us. Doctor and call. Good evening. Yes. Good evening, Godfrey. Greetings to you and uh, to your guest. Sure. Go ahead, please. Um, doctor, I must congratulate you on a quite outstanding magistral class this evening. Speaking about Thanks. dementia. How are you? I don't flatter you. So if I give you a thumbs up, you can consider it to be real thing. Eh? The real McCoy, as we say. I said, thank you. How are you? Oh, no, I'm fine, doctor. I'm quite well for the time being by the grace of God. Staying out of okay. COVID's way. Nice. Now, doctor, very interesting, I, I repeat. Uh, but I want to touch on something. But first, may I ask through the first question out? Do you have any idea, the stati statistics, pardon, on uh, all the population of our country uh, which suffer from um, dementia? You'd answer afterwards. Let me go on and just finish the other part of it. I speak to you as a mechanic. Uh -huh. Pardon? Go ahead, go ahead. Uh -huh. I speak to you as a mechanic. So the things I may say here, here just uh, results of my um, investigation reach, research through the, the internet and otherwise. I suffer with a problem which we spoke about already. It's called hyperosmia. You understand that I am. I had to stay away from strong scents and so on. People may be smoking cigarettes 100 meters away, and I smell it and things like that. These days, I can't even smell my little Charlies and them kind of, you know, them nice perfume. Even a woman passing 50 yards away and more are smelling. And it molests me. It causes irritation, irritability, which you spoke about there. And um, even headaches, serious migraines, headache I suffer. This is the reason why I wear a gas mask, to mitigate the inhalation of strong scents, fragrance, aromas, stenches, etc. 
In my research, I found out that air pollution has a lot to do with dementia, in addition to other causes, other illnesses, pulmonary, um, coronary, strokes, uh, and other things you would know. Doctor, we have a major problem in this here country with burning, burning from vegetation to whatever, including plastics, tires, whatever, including, doctor, the burning of, well, we call it coal pit, charcoal kilns. Even in populated areas, we talk about residential areas, you know these things emit gases, CO, CO2, methane. These things, according to my research, can create dementia. I spoke to another doctor, I asked the question, I think he's a psychologist or, or whatever, uh, I think he's Mr. Panchu. You may know, you ought to know him as a part of your fraternity. And he confirmed. I didn't really see confirmation, what I wanted him to do. Or not pardon, I didn't really seek him to re ask him to find out and so on to talk about what I really wanted was confirmation. Can you confirm, doctor, that there is a correlation between dementia and air pollution? In addition to the other question as to the statistics of all people who suffer from that. I thank you very much and keep up the good work, my young lady. Thank you very much. Good night. So, um, good question. So let me answer the second question first. Um, you know, we all, I think we generally shy away from the whole discussion of toxins because industrialization has brought on a whole lot, lot of materials. First of all, it's, it's illegal to burn anything in Grenada. I thought you had to ask permission to burn a, a, pit, a, coal, a pit of coals because burning anything is should be you should also get permission from the fire marshal, right? Um, we have not, I, I think we have not garnered the resources or we have not um, had the resources to figure out what is um, present in our ambient, in our air. And as a result, it, it's passed. You know, even things like cancers, we have, we probably have environmental toxins that we have not yet understood. And um, this is related to the other half of the question. We don't do research. Mm -hmm. I know one of our young environmental health um, persons on the island is currently doing some research about the con soil content and relationship between um, occupation and um, and and cancers, for example. But in relation to dementia, and, and let me skip, let me segue into dementia as for our numbers. We really don't know. I think globally, especially in the third world, and unfortunately, they claim that 60% of the people, though, although those countries have a lot, a lot of the people that have dementia come from lower and, 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 and middle-income countries, right? Maybe the nutrition, maybe the toxins. Um, I don't know, but I have no doubt that just as how those toxins can cause cancers and other diseases, that is quite likely that it's like, it, it, it can cause, um, it can cause um, dementia. Look, we look, we look at ourselves today and, and the, 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 the magnitude of the Sahara dust. I have never seen it this bad. Yes. I've never, I don't think anybody has ever seen it this bad. So when my Jamaican friends complain, my friend, I said, guys, we, we have the same area. This is just that this weekend was really bad. So you guys got some, right? But it was really bad. But if you look at it through, uh, look at the sun, you can't see because there's just so much particulate matter. What is in that particulate matter? How much of it gets into my water? How much of it gets into my lungs? What happens when it gets into my lungs? What does it, those little... Those little particles, what do, what do they release into my body that can cause me harm? So to answer a person, we still need to have a lot of research. It is very likely because there are a lot of environmental toxins that we come in every day. You talk about burning. What are you burning? You're burning plastic. You're burning all kind of things that you don't even know what they are. If you burn something, if you burn uh, any piece of material, the composition changes. Okay. If you burn too much, you might have having a different composition, too much are there, and those gases are water on it. So I can understand your concern. The, uh, in relation to the data, we really don't have data. And like I said earlier, the World Health Organization is actually on a 
on a fast forward move to figure out. We actually did at the Ministry of Health that we had done a, 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 a survey. We had no services. So if you, you know, most of the people who live at Richmond Home, for example, have dementia, but we still don't have special programs for them, you know, occupational mm -hmm. um, therapies, recreational therapies. Um, you don't, the nurses don't have, they have some training, but not their, what is required. How do we get people at home to take care of their parents? Are there daycare facilities where you can take your mother if she has dementia? Or how do I recognize? You don't have a mood and memory clinic. How, so for me to diagnose, I have to go probably take two of the symptoms that I told you that you see and say, well, maybe it's two, two or more of those symptoms mm -hmm. indicate that the person may be having dementia. But they probably also have depression. People with depression have challenges. They forget things. Uh, their whole cognitive ability changes. They have severe depression. So, you know, you have to go through all of that. This is a thing called a mood and memory clinic where people go to get screened for dementia. Mm -hmm. We don't have those facilities. So those are all the things that will come up. As as I know the survey is almost, well, they were doing a world survey. So all countries, so they put the details together and then come up with programs as to how we can approach the issue of dementia. How can we ensure that there's special facilities? If you are taking your mother away on a plane, does anybody ask if she had dementia? Hmm. No, right? I need a special seat. She might need to get a seat nearer to the bathroom, right? So you can take her every so often and check because you know she goes to the bathroom every hour. So those are the things that we we we, we have to get. And we in the third world really just don't have a sentence. What we have is people who still live in families and who recognize that if my grandmother had Alzheimer's or dementia, you know, we have to take care of her. But being able to calm. What happens when you see people with Alzheimer's who become very, very irritable? Mm -hmm. How do you calm them down? What do you do? They don't understand you say, ah! and all of us call, what's wrong with this man? He's so busy, he's like this. He's like, I'm just going to take him with him. You know, and that's not what we need to do. We need to understand what's going on and allow them. Let them know how to blow off and, you know, and have conversations. And they may not remember what they did when they were 45 years old, Right, but they may remember what they did when they were two and three and four. Mm -hmm. And you sit there when I was six years old. You know, I used to like ice cream as a little girl, and they were come and say, Yeah, I like ice cream too. Right? And you might realize that they, 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 they what we call contrary, so they're making up lies to them. It says, Really? That's a, that's a funny story. You know, you just let it pass. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn how to be tolerant and how to care. So, no data. It's very important. We don't know. We don't know how many people have dementia. Um, we just don't know. I, if I were to tell you, I'd be telling you a lie. We just simply do not know. All right. Let's see if we can get our final call because time has gone. Doctor and call, good evening. Yeah, good night. Yes. Good. Um, I just want to ask one question to Dr. Nixon. Um, if your memories are gone, could it come back in your lifetime? I'm waiting for you right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear that question. Can you repeat it for me, He wants to know if you lose your memory, if um, if it can come back, or if it's gone for good. <laughs> and, and, and the different causes for loss of memory. You may have you may have a, a, an emotionally traumatic experience, you know, and you forget. Um, some children get sick and lose their memory. I my daughter had surgery and lost her memory, and she was going to professional school. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what the cause is. Right? It depends on what makes your memory go away. So, like, you know, people ask, you see it in the movies all the time, but those are real. Those reflect real things that have happened. Um, it might take time. You may never get back to where your memory was. Or, you know, you might never recall everything that you've had stored in your memory bank as a part of your brain that stores information. You may not remember. Um, but sometimes, some people, depending on the cause and the interventions, you know, the support you get, the therapy, if they think your whatever diseases made you lose um, your memory, it may come back. Okay. May right. Um, so basically, Doc, um, we are at the point where we just have to quickly review what we spoke about earlier because it's almost 10 o'clock and time has gone. So we could just what briefly run through <laughs> dementia, what it is, and. But my dementia just says it. You said 10? I, I thought it was 7. <laughs> 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 yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 you're picking it up. <laughs> yeah, 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 you got it, huh? Yes. Yes, so, indeed. So, so we look at dementia, which is a big, a big thing. 
happens a lot. It's, um, it starts to show itself in, in most in the adult population. It comes in slowly and, and can progress. It's called, there's a myriad of causes. You can have caused by chemicals. You can have caused by, by damage to the structure of the brain. You can have caused because you have chronic illnesses. You can have caused because you have... Um, um, Infections, deficiencies, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Deficient and um, nutritional challenges. There's a myriad of reasons why you would have dementia. What happens in dementia? Your cognitive skills, ability to think and make decisions, and uh, it goes so far away that you cannot function. You cannot do your daily functions. Also, you can't make yourself. You can't feed yourself. You all you probably do is make a mess, right? But you can't. Your normal daily functioning disappears. There are different kinds. You can have Alzheimer's is the most common one. Mm -hmm. And as you get older, the greater chance, the greater the chance of having Alzheimer's. Um, people with dementia require a lot of support and a lot of understanding. As we have an aging population, we're going to have more challenges with people having dementia. We can we can try and make sure that it doesn't happen by eating properly, by exercising, by not smoking, by not consuming alcohol, by and doing things, playing games, keeping your brain active, you know, telling stories and writing and playing Scrabble and playing mm -hmm. those things that stimulate your brain, um, they are, are thought to kind of ward it off or at least ward off the, 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 the severeness of your dementia. So, you know, we know that in our environment, we still don't have the services that are required and hopefully within no time. And, and it will become a thing that the entire population can appreciate because there's going to have to be a lot of education. Um, and, and hopefully there will be facilities because as we have an Asian population, it, it becomes imperative mm -hmm. for us to create social um, services and systems that take care of that. That's going to be a special population with special needs. You're going to be living to 70 and 80 if Corona don't kill all of us all first. Mm -hmm. But see, on a serious note, we're going to have to change our social structure work. Um, we're going to have to contribute into the social services to ensure that as we live longer, there are services because we are, most of us who become, who have dementia are going to need a certain level of support in order to survive, in order to live a, a dignified kind of life. Okay. So you're not also the road walking up and down. Okay. And quickly before we wrap, um, I, I have my family um, and uh, oh, you know my my grandmother she lives with us um she has dementia what what should i know what should i be doing in you order to provide to provide yes. um some kind know, of care you should know that you have to feed her that the diet that she requires you should know that you need to encourage exercise you should know above all things and that's one of the things that we forget because we see people's dementia get worse in the summer and those hot months you have to give them fluids Lots of water, mm -hmm. lots of fluids. Yeah, they might pee the bed, but make sure they keep hydrated. That's one of the biggest ones. Because when you get hydrated, your brain shrivels up a little and it gets a little worse. So with your grandmother, you have to you have to learn tolerance above all. I think your family has to understand that this is not an easy road. She doesn't understand what she's doing. She doesn't want to do it this. That's not she's not trying to be spiteful or disagreeable. Or uh, and she might tell you things, you know. She mm -hmm. might tell you things, but she's not responsible for what she's saying because half of the time they're not even aware of the things they say okay mm -hmm. and the things they do and you might see the hallucinations and you might see a lot of change you might see um difficulty in the gates they can't walk because everything becomes so very uncoordinated that they can't manage and of course you need to protect them from themselves from mm -hmm. self-harm you know falling down breaking their hips um lighting a fire um protect them from abuse from other people and that's one of the other things that we probably going you can invite people from social development mm -hmm. to talk about elder abuse because it is a problem in our country. We just to tell an old person about all this abuse, you know, just to tell them to learn, move there. And you know, sometimes we just rough and, 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 and very unkind. So, and those of us who, and I hope people are listening, who tea for grandmother money, right? And and take our parents' pension because we think we need, we need it more than them, that's theirs, mm -hmm. right? So I think. We have to make sure that they're protected from abuse and that they live a dignified life. That's the basic thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, there were medications. Well, this is what I wanted. To know. There are some medications, right, that they have given for Alzheimer's. Mm. 
uh, the expenses and they not. The benefits don't outweigh the price. Okay. Right? So there are medications. There are some medications I accept and all of things. But um they don't last very long because the stimulation they give at the, at the synapses at the between one nerve and the other is temporary. Mm -hmm. And um I know there's research ongoing, so hopefully we'll find a cure. Mm -hmm. In the interim, we need to prevent ourselves. Keep our weight down, exercise, be jovial and go and dance. Don't drink too much rum because we already drink too much alcohol. It should be clean air, drink a lot of water, eat a lot of fresh vegetables and fruits, and be nice to people. All right. And in the interim, if you want to get to 80 years old, please remember to wear your mask. Right. Mm -hmm. It's still corona. There's been an upsurge of corona in the U.S. The, 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 the CDC says that there's just, just so much virus. I guess they almost throw their hands in the air. Mm -hmm. So we still have a responsibility to ourselves and to our partners to wear, wear uh, a mask, to maintain wash the hands, social distancing as well. And to maintain, maintain physical distance. Don't physical, be socially yes. Maintain, but hygiene, hygiene, hygiene. Remember to teach our children and remember to help the older people. And it's important that we protect people with um, with dementia who really can't make decisions, that we protect them, make sure their hands are always sanitized, make sure we stay away from them, mm -hmm. make sure they, if they have to be outside, that people don't come to visit and bring it already, they probably have other diseases. So we have to protect them in this spirit even more because they are able to do so. All Thank right you. then. Thank you so very much, Doc. Um, it was it's always such a pleasure, um, you know, having you on the program and and you know, uh, disseminating information to our law listeners. Um, sorry, folks, we couldn't take as much call as we wanted to, but there was a lot of information we need to get to you. Uh, maybe uh, some other time we can, you know, maybe look at the topic. There's a lot more to talk about, and we might be able to accommodate some more calls. But thank you, uh, so, nevertheless. Thanks. One of the things, um, you know, we give information, but I like people to go read. You know, go on, just Google dementia. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, um, that's quite a bit. At places like the Bayo Clinic and go to the Web National MD, Institute. Yes, there's a lot, right. there's a lot of information. National Institutes of Health, um, the CDC, CARFA, PAHO. There are a lot of people with a lot of information. You may not understand everything, but... Some like if you go to Mayo Clinic, they tend to put it very simple. Yes, they do. Or they if you go to the Alzheimer's um, Association mm -hmm. of the US, they have very simple information, you know. And um, if you have somebody who may have dementia, you probably need to take them to your doctor, you know, uh, so that they can get checked. And can give you your doctor can help you to to take better care of your of, the, of, of your family. So just also don't forget that this is not the end of it. I I had to go read to get information. Right, and try to break it down to make sure that you can appreciate yes. what this is. And if, if we read, all of us has a, everybody has a phone with some data. On. Take twenty minutes of your data every day and read something. You might be surprised at how much information there is out there. Yeah, and not only that, but that that in itself would help stimulate your brain and probably help yeah. prevent you from getting dementia. And from getting dementia. And yes, it did. <laughs> all right. I hope we can't keep all this hard enough. That's right. <laughs> Doc, once again, right. thank you so very much, and um, we'll chat in the week. Do have yourself a good night. Thank you, folks, and uh, I'll be back with you tomorrow evening. Tomorrow, of course, we'll be having our release program. Last week, we were unable to because of the uh, development agenda program, but we'll be back tomorrow evening, and there's a lot to discuss, yeah? The GCN and GCA merger, um, so much to discuss. So I'll be back with you tomorrow, 6 o'clock, and we've got to release it. Until then, do have a good night. All the best. abuse, cancer, measles, 